Chapter 2 Early the following spring, during the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was serving the king his wine. I had never appeared sad in his presence before this time, so the king asked me, Why are you so sad? You aren't sick, are you? You look like a man with deep troubles. Then I was badly frightened, but I replied, Long live the king. Why shouldn't I be sad? For the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins, and the gates have been burned down. The king asked, Well, how can I help you? With a prayer to the God of heaven, I replied, If it please your majesty, and if you are pleased with me, your servant, send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. The king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked, How long will you be gone? When will you return? So the king agreed, and I set a date for my departure. I also said to the king, If it please your majesty, give me letters to the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, instructing them to let me travel safely through their territories on my way to Judah. And please send a letter to Asaph, the manager of the king's forest, instructing him to give me timber. I will need it to make beams for the gates of the temple fortress, for the city walls, and for a house for myself. And the king granted these requests, because the gracious hand of God was on me. When I came to the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, I delivered the king's letters to them. The king, I should add, had sent along army officers and horsemen to protect me. But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard of my arrival, they were very angry that someone had come who was interested in helping Israel. Three days after my arrival at Jerusalem, I slipped out during the night, taking only a few others with me. I had not told anyone about the plans God had put in my heart for Jerusalem. We took no pack animals with us, except the donkey that I myself was riding. I went out through the valley gate, past the jackal's well, and over to the dung gate to inspect the broken walls and burned gates. Then I went to the fountain gate and to the king's pool, but my donkey couldn't get through the rubble. So I went up the Kidron Valley instead, inspecting the wall before I turned back and entered again at the valley gate. The city officials did not know I had been out there or what I was doing, for I had not yet said anything to anyone about my plans. I had not yet spoken to the religious and political leaders, the officials, or anyone else in the administration. But now I said to them, You know full well the tragedy of our city. It lies in ruins, and its gates are burned. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and rid ourselves of this disgrace. Then I told them about how the gracious hand of God had been on me, and about my conversation with the king. They replied at once, Good, let's rebuild the wall. So they began the good work. But when Sanballat, Tobiah, and Gisham the Arab heard of our plan, they scoffed contemptuously. What are you doing, rebelling against the king like this? they asked. But I replied, The God of heaven will help us succeed. We, his servants, will start rebuilding this wall. But you have no stake or claim in Jerusalem.